This video is going to discuss how to write down a time-dependent wave function in quantum mechanics. So time dependence is often relatively unimportant in quantum chemistry. So you, in principle, we're always starting from the time-dependent Schrodinger equation shown here. However, unless time actually appears as a variable in your Hamiltonian, you can use separation of variables to decouple position and time. And so we can break it up into the time-independent Schrodinger equation, h psi equals e psi, and this time-dependent piece, which has a pretty straightforward solution, which is just that phi of t is equal to e to the minus i times the energy times t over h bar. And now, like I say, most of the time in chemistry, time does not appear as a variable in the Hamiltonian. So usually we can do this. And so when we use separation of variables, then the overall time-dependent wave function, capital psi of x and t, becomes just a product of the time-independent wave function, lowercase psi of x, times the time dependent piece which is just this little exponential factor. And so you'll notice we just take our time independent wave function and multiply it by e to the minus i e n t over h bar. The one key ingredient here is that the energy that you see up here in the exponential must match the energy of the eigenfunction that we're multiplying psi n. So let's do some examples. So let's just consider the first case where your wave function is in fact an energy eigenstate. So for example, if we're in the particle in the box system, we, our wave function is one of the particle in the box states, say the n equals 1 state, which has the wave function psi 1 of x is equal to square root of 2 over l sine pi x over l. The energy of this state is h bar squared pi squared over 2 ml squared, or sometimes we write that as h squared over 8 ml squared if we pull out the factors of 2 pi from the h bar. In this case, it's going to be a little more convenient to leave it in the h bar form instead of pulling out the 2 pi factors. So if we want to write down the time-dependent version of psi 1, we're just going to take psi 1 and multiply it by an e to the minus i e1 t over h bar, where e1 is just this energy here, the energy of this particular eigenstate psi 1. So we take our psi 1 and we multiply it by e to the minus i e1 over times t over h bar. And you'll notice I ended up canceling one of the h bars in the numerator with the one in the denominator. So that's why we have just one factor of h bar instead of h bar squared over h bar. So that's all there is to it. This is our time dependent wave function. Why don't you go ahead and try another example. So this time try it for the particle in a box n equals 3 state. Pause the video and write down the time dependent wave function for psi 3 and then hit play when you're ready. All right, so again, the basic idea is we're just going to take psi 3 and we're going to multiply it by this exponential time-dependent factor, e to the i 3t over h bar. The only difference from our last example is the energy that appears in the exponent. In this case, it's the energy of the psi 3 state, which is 9 h bar squared pi squared over 2 ml squared, instead of just 1 h bar squared pi squared over 2 ml squared. And so you'll notice we have a slightly different answer up here with the 9 in the exponential. And of course, we have psi 3 here instead of psi 1. So that's our time dependent wave function for psi 3. Now, what if our wave function is not an energy eigenstate? Well, we can go ahead and write down the time dependent wave function in that case just by thinking of the wave function phi, whatever our current wave function phi is, as a superposition of energy eigenstates. It might be, for example, superposition of two particle in the box states. In this case, I've written it as 1 over square root of 2 psi 1 of x plus 1 over square root of 2 psi 3 of x. So if we have a wave function like this and we want to write down its time dependence, we just multiply each one of the energy eigenstates here, the psi 1 and the psi 3, by their own time dependent factors. And so, for example, for psi 1, we multiply it by a e to the minus i e t over h bar. In this case, for psi 1, it's e1, the energy corresponding to psi 1, which is just this energy here. Likewise, for psi 3, we also multiply it by a time-dependent piece, but it gets a different energy up here. It gets the energy corresponding to psi 3, which is e3, shown here. And if you wanted, you could go ahead and plug in all these different formulas for psi 1, e1, psi 3, and e3 to get the full mathematical expression. But the basic idea is we just take each one of the energy eigenstates in this superposition and each one gets its own time dependent piece 
with its own corresponding energy up here in the exponent. Why don't you try one more example? Write down the time dependent wave function for this 5x, again, for the particle in the box. So 5x is equal to 1 over square root of 2, psi 2 of x plus 1 half times psi 4 of x minus 1 half psi 5 of x. Pause the video, work out the solution, hit play when you're ready. All right, again, the solution to this time dependent wave function is simply multiplying each one of these wave functions in the right hand side, the psi 2, the psi 4, and the psi 5, by the appropriate time dependent piece. So that each gets multiplied by an e to the minus i e t over h bar factor. The only difference is which energy goes in the exponent. For psi 2, we put e2. For psi 4, we put e4. For psi 5, we put e5, the energy corresponding to each one of those states as defined down here. Overall, once you've been able to write down the time dependent wave function, you can go ahead and do all the other sorts of things you'd usually do with a wave function. For example, you can compute probabilities of finding the particle somewhere or check that it's normalized at some time t. That would just be doing the standard psi star psi, or in this case, phi star phi. Uh, dx integrated over whatever the appropriate limits of x are, that will eliminate the variable x from it and any values that, any dependence on t that remains will tell you how the probability or the normalization changes as a function of time. You could also look at the expectation values as a function of time using the standard expectation value expressions and again you'll integrate over for example x, integrate over position, but you may well be left with time as a variable which will tell you how for example the average position, average momentum or some other quantity changes in time. Now notice that if you're in an energy eigenstate it often works out that these various properties you might calculate in this sort of manner end up having the time dependence cancel out. The t disappears when you take the expectation values and so on because you have the psi star psi and so you have the complex conjugate times itself and that often cancels the time dependent phase factor. However, if you're in a superposition of energy eigenstates like the case two examples we just did, then the time dependence doesn't usually cancel out and you get much more complicated and interesting time dependence. Final note is just whenever you're working with time dependent wave functions, just remember they are complex because you have that e to the minus i e t over h bar factor, so watch out for your complex conjugates.